What would you do if a nuclear war broke out right now? This question, as unsettling as it is, underscores the gravity of our times. We live in a world where nuclear threats are real, where the unthinkable could become our reality. It's not about fear-mongering but about acknowledging the unpredictable nature of global politics and the importance of being prepared. Preparation can spell the difference between survival and catastrophe. While we hope it never comes to this, it's crucial to know what to do in such a scenario. First, it's important to understand the nature of the threat. A nuclear explosion is not a single event but a series of destructive forces that occur in rapid succession. The initial blast is the most immediate and devastating. It carries a wave of intense heat, pressure and light, obliterating everything in its immediate vicinity. But the danger doesn't end there. The explosion also releases a massive amount of radiation. This radiation is invisible, odorless and tasteless, but it's lethal. It penetrates deep into the body, damaging cells and causing radiation sickness. Even a small dose of radiation can cause long-term health problems like cancer, while a large dose can be fatal. After the initial blast and radiation comes the fallout. Fallout is the radioactive debris that's thrown into the air by the explosion. It can be carried by the wind for hundreds of miles, contaminating everything it touches. Fallout is especially dangerous because it lingers. It can remain radioactive for years or even decades, posing a long-term threat to anyone who comes into contact with it. So what does all this mean? It means that a nuclear explosion is a multifaceted threat. It's not just about surviving the initial blast, but also about dealing with the radiation and fallout that follow. And it's also about understanding the long-term health risks associated with radiation exposure. Now that we understand the risks involved, let's explore how to protect ourselves. In the event of a nuclear explosion, your immediate actions can make the difference between life and death. As the shockwave and heat from a nuclear blast can reach you faster than you'd think, your immediate response is crucial. The first and foremost thing to do is to find shelter. This isn't about finding a cozy spot to sit it out but rather a place of maximum protection. Ideally, you want to be underground. If that's not possible, aim for the center of a large building. The more layers of protection between you and the nuclear fallout, the better. Now you might be wondering why underground or the center of a building. It's because these locations provide the best shielding from harmful radiation. In the same way that layers of clothing can protect you from the cold, layers of soil, concrete or brick can shield you from radiation. Once you have found your shelter, it's crucial to stay there for at least 24 hours. This initial period is when radiation levels are at their peak, and venturing out can expose you to a lethal dose. You might be tempted to leave, to search for loved ones or to assess the damage, but remember, surviving the initial blast is just the first step. Staying sheltered is just as important. Another useful immediate action is the duck and cover method. This is not just a relic from the Cold War era, but a potentially life-saving maneuver. If you see a flash of light that is brighter than the sun, don't look at it. Instead, drop to the ground immediately and cover your head and neck with your hands and arms. If possible, find cover under a sturdy piece of furniture or against a wall. This can protect against flying debris and also help shield from initial radiation. These immediate actions are all about giving yourself the best chance of survival. They're not guarantees, but they can vastly improve your odds. Remember, the first 24 hours are the most critical. Stay sheltered. Surviving the initial blast is only the first step. Now comes the long-term survival. In the aftermath of a nuclear event, you'll need to focus on the essentials of life. Food, water, and information. Let's start with the first two. Ideally, you'll have a supply of food and water stored ahead of time. This isn't about hoarding, but about being prepared. You'll need enough to last you and your loved ones for several weeks at least. Non-perishable foods such as canned goods or freeze-dried meals are your best bet. Remember, it's not just about quantity but also about variety. A diverse diet will help keep you healthy and boost morale in a difficult time. Water is equally if not more important. You'll need it for drinking, cooking and hygiene. The rule of thumb is a gallon per person per day. Again, store as much as you can beforehand, in proper containers, away from any potential sources of contamination. Now let's talk about rationing. It's human nature to want to eat and drink as usual, especially when under stress. But in a survival situation it's crucial to make your supplies last. Be disciplined. Plan your meals, measure portions, avoid waste. Your body can adapt to less food, but not to no food. In terms of information, a reliable source is key. Ideally you'll have a battery-operated radio. 
In a world where we're used to instant updates on our smartphones, this might seem archaic, but it's reliable. It can give you vital updates on the situation outside, government instructions, weather forecasts, and more. Remember to have extra batteries and use them sparingly. In conclusion, long-term survival in a post-nuclear scenario isn't about being the toughest or the bravest. It's about being prepared, being sensible, and being resourceful. It's about knowing your needs, managing your supplies, and staying informed. And above all, it's about maintaining hope and determination because survival, in the end, is a mental game as much as it is a physical one. One of the biggest threats in a nuclear war scenario is radiation. Radiation, invisible yet deadly, poses a significant challenge in a nuclear fallout. But fear not, with the right knowledge and preparation, you can take steps to minimize your exposure. Firstly, you want to put as much distance and shielding between you and the radiation as possible. The more barriers, the better. This could mean retreating to a basement or a central room without windows. Time also plays a crucial role. The longer you stay in your shelter, especially during the first 48 hours when radiation levels are highest, the more your exposure reduces. Secondly, decontamination is vital. If you've been outside and suspect you've been exposed, remove your clothing as soon as you're safely indoors. This simple act can eliminate up to 90% of radioactive material. Then, gently wash with warm water and soap. Avoid scrubbing or scratching the skin which may allow radioactive particles to enter your body. Now let's talk about potassium iodide tablets. In a nuclear event, radioactive iodine is released into the atmosphere and can be absorbed by your thyroid, causing damage. Potassium iodide tablets saturate your thyroid with non-radioactive iodine, leaving no room for the radioactive kind. It's important to note that these tablets are not a magic shield against all forms of radiation, but they can protect your thyroid. Remember these tablets should only be taken on the advice of public health officials and are not a substitute for seeking proper shelter. Also, they are most effective if taken within 3 to 4 hours of exposure. Even with these precautions, it's crucial to have a radiation detection device, like a Geiger-Muller counter. This tool can help you monitor radiation levels and make informed decisions about when it's safe to leave your shelter. Radiation is a silent killer, be prepared to protect yourself. Knowledge, preparation, and vigilance can significantly increase your chances of surviving a nuclear event. Stay informed, stay safe. In conclusion, preparedness is key to survival in a nuclear war scenario. It's not just about having a stocked pantry or a fallout shelter in your backyard. It's about understanding the threat, knowing the immediate actions to take, and being ready for the long-term survival challenges that follow. We've discussed the threat of a nuclear war, the devastation it can cause, and the lingering dangers that come with it. The immediate aftermath of an explosion is just the beginning. The radioactive fallout that follows can be equally, if not more, deadly. Being aware of these realities is the first step to being prepared. Knowing the immediate actions to take is equally crucial. We've discussed the importance of finding shelter immediately, ideally within the first 15 minutes of a detonation. It's about acting quickly and decisively, not wasting precious seconds in panic or indecision. Long-term survival is another key aspect of preparedness. A fallout shelter isn't a permanent home, it's a temporary refuge until it's safe to emerge and start rebuilding. And that could take weeks, months or even years. Being prepared means having the supplies, the knowledge and the mental resilience to endure these long periods of isolation and uncertainty. Dealing with radiation is another critical part of preparedness. Knowing how to measure radiation levels, how to decontaminate yourself and your surroundings, and how to treat radiation sickness can be life-saving skills. But above all, preparedness is about being mentally ready. It's about understanding that a nuclear war isn't just a disaster movie scenario. It's a real, albeit unlikely possibility. And it's about being ready to make difficult decisions quickly in the face of fear and confusion. Remember, the key to survival is preparation. It's about having the knowledge, the resources, and the mental readiness to face any scenario. It's about being proactive, not reactive. And it's about understanding that being prepared doesn't mean living in fear. It means living with awareness and readiness. So stay safe, stay alert, and stay prepared.